Bats are commonly misunderstood creatures. However, bats are very important in nature. These flying mammals eat insects and pollinate some plants. Unfortunately, bats can also transmit rabies. This video is about reducing risks from bats to children at your school while minimizing the impact on bats and their environment. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Lavacek. I'm the state public health veterinarian at the Arizona Department of Health Services. Every year, multiple incidents occur where children find a sick or dead bat on school grounds or find a bat and bring it to school to share with their friends. Sometimes these bats are sick or infected with rabies. Let's find out from the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta how big of a problem this is in the United States. Dr. Chuck Ruprecht, the leading expert on rabies, explains why it's important to educate children to never pick up or touch a bat. Most people have never seen a bat up close and personal. And typically what we see with school children is when a bat will be grounded. And when a grounded bat may have a greater likelihood of being rabid, one of the things we'd like to try and teach children is to love your own animals and to leave others alone. For example, recently in Montana, when a rabid bat was brought to school, as opposed to Mary's little lamb, more than 100 families had to be evaluated for potential exposure, and that animal was dead. You could imagine what would happen when very active youngsters at recess find a live grounded bat. Dr. Ruprecht issued some special considerations for schools concerning bats. Oftentimes, particularly in older schools, bats may roost in school buildings and at different times of the year, although it's not frequent, one might find grounded bats, potentially rabid bats, in schoolyards. And hence, because of their ability to roost, to form large populations in school buildings, that's not exactly an ideal situation. Is it an emergency when a bat is found at a school? Rabies exposures are serious, but they're an urgency rather than a medical emergency. It's not something that you have to do within minutes. And in fact, keeping a cool head, trying to perform proper first aid on the bite, safely capturing the animal for submission for diagnosis, because most bats are not rabid, and hence if it's not rabies, 95% of the time, we can rest easy. Dr. Ruprecht elaborated on the role that public health plays whenever a bat is found. They're a great source of information for what to do in a variety of situations, particularly in regards to rabies, as far as how the animal should be dealt with, where it should go, for example, for rabies diagnosis. And importantly, they serve as the interface between the medical community, medical providers, nurses, and physicians, and the public at large as to what to do when you're exposed to a rabid animal. School officials can help public health officials by gathering some specific information. Was the person actually bitten or not? Because we're most concerned about bite exposures. Very, very, very few cases of rabies ever occur from non-bite exposures. And also the situation involved was as a very young child that perhaps we can't accept certain parts of the story with as much truthfulness as we would like. We can't obtain an adequate history. A young teenage girl from Wisconsin, Gina Giese, picked up a down bat, was bitten and became very ill with rabies, but miraculously survived. She is the only person known to have survived rabies without receiving rabies vaccination prior to illness. Now, a student at Marion University, Gina shared the following warning for schools. Make sure you, you, you know, watch out for kids who are playing with bats or any wild animal definitely a dangerous thing and um, you know if you if you think that they had any you know contact scratch or bite or, or anything broke the skin definitely you know call a doctor send them in you know it's better to be tested and have it negative than to not be tested and have it positive if children have contact with a bat at your school the situation is urgent but it's not an emergency school officials should call their local or state public health agency for assistance in assessing the risk for children prior to the parents taking their child to health care provider. Let's take a moment to visit our state wildlife agency, the Arizona Game and Fish Department, to learn additional information about bats. Hey, hey Angie. Elizabeth. Good to see you. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us today. All right. Let's go over here and talk. Okay. Sounds good. 
So Angie, I'm so glad you took some time out to speak to us. Since you're a bat biologist at a state wildlife agency, what do you think schools should know about bats? They should know that bats are really um, amazing, interesting creatures. Um, they're the only mammal that flies. Um, they do a really important service to the environment. Bats eat tons and tons of insects, so they really benefit farmers. Also, there are several species of bats that pollinate saguaro cactus and other columnar cactus in the southwest. So wonderful to hear about all the things that, that bats are important for in nature. Uh, what if a bat's found on the ground? Which, what should the school do then? Well, if, if an official fi a school official finds a bat on the ground, they should get a cardboard box or a Tupperware container, place that over the bat, slide um, either a piece of cardboard or the, the Tupperware lid under that container and remove it from that area. Now what if a, um, a, a teacher finds a bat inside a classroom with, with kids, what should, they, what should that teacher do then? Well the teacher should ask the children to leave the room um, and should also make note of what children are there that day so that um, they can be um, interviewed later by health officials if, ne if needed. And, and then this, the teacher can use the cardboard box or Tupperware or trash can, some kind of container, place it over the bat call an animal control or something to remove it or can actually seal that up and and remove it from the room. So would you agree that then the school officials should call maybe local animal control or the state wildlife agency to have the bat picked up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, either one of those and definitely the animal control agency to have the bat picked up and and transported to the appropriate place to have it tested. Um, the state wildlife agency also may be able to help either with the pickup or with um, providing some advice on, on what they should do next. Really a, a, a small percentage of the bats that are found on the ground are actually positive for rabies. In Arizona, it's, it's 12 to 18 percent, so it's actually more likely the bats are going to have something else other than rabies. Yeah, actually uh, it's believed that less than 1 percent of all the free-flying you know, bats out in the environment um, do have rabies. And so it's just a really small percentage when you look at the total number of bats. Um, but the, the thing is, is that people encounter the ones that, that have a problem because bats um, that are going about their daily activities, you know, sleeping during the day, flying around, foraging at night, uh, most people don't ever encounter those bats, but it's the ones that have a problem, whether it be that they're dehydrated or tired from a, a long migration or possibly rabies. Those are the ones that have fallen and are susceptible to being found by a, a person. But unfortunately, a lot of times by the time uh, school officials realize a child has found a bat, the, the children may have played vigorously with it and then the the bat needs to be tested for rabies. What is public health's role if a school finds a bat and how effective is the rabies vaccine? So if, the, if the bat tests negative then nothing further needs to be done unless there's a colony there that you know needs to be excluded but if the bat tests positive um, some children may need to be vaccinated for rabies and the human rabies vaccine is so effective that as long as it started within a few days the child will not get rabies. There's time. There's time for an interview. There's a time for interviewing the children and making sure that the ones that need it get vaccinated and those that don't don't get it. Mm -hmm. If a school notices that there, there may be bats there, um, what things can they do to discourage uh, bats from, from roosting on, on school grounds? Keeping the building free of, of openings and small holes, bats can crawl through some pretty small openings. Um, and so keeping those areas sealed up is important. Also, if they know that bats are roosting um, on the exterior of a building, there are things that they can do to discourage that, like hanging uh, sheets of plastic in the areas where the bats would hold on. Also streamers and or, or putting a fan um, to create an air current will discourage bats from roosting. Um, but if the bats are getting into the building then the most important thing is before that happens um, to keep those areas sealed. This, let's say the bats are trying to roost inside. It might be difficult for the, uh, the school to actually recognize that unless they get all the way into the interior of the building. So uh, what can school officials and sanitarians that might be visiting those schools look for um, for uh, signs that bats may be roosting at the schools? Bats will leave signs on a, a building. Um, there's um, the stain that's created when, when bats fly into and out of a building, a, a brown stain. Um, that will be around like a little opening. Um, there's 
uh, the, the urine from a bat will crystallize and turn sort of a brownish golden color. Um, also, guano, the bat droppings, um, a lot of times that's one of the first things that's noticed is, is these little uh, guano droppings that look a lot like rodent droppings, but there, is, there are differences and they can be easily t told apart. Um, and, and also, just seeing bats leave a building, maybe in the evening time. Bats fly out typically every evening. Um, and so if, if a school official suspects that bats are roosting in a building, they can simply watch um, in various areas around dusk, and they'll see bats flying out. If a uh, school is suspecting that they may have um, a colony of bats roosting on the school grounds, um, who should they call? Well, that would be a good job for the state wildlife agency to um, um, either assess that problem if they can or to maybe rec recommend uh, someone who does exclusions, um, who has the proper training to come and um, both assess the situation and then um, seal up the, the building after removing the bats. So if a school ended up calling someone who did not have experience, what could happen? What, what, how could that impact the bats? Well, um, there are probably some uh, companies out there that would exclude bats by killing them, and, and that's never a good way to do it. Um, in a lot of states, bats are protected, so you know that's one thing. But also, um, a, a school should be wary of, of any professional who, who plans to kill the bats because that doesn't really solve the problem. Um, if there is a situation that bats have been attracted to and are living in a building, then that's where the correction needs to occur. Um, the, the bats, if they can't get in, um, then that means no other colonies are going to get in. Um, but if you kill that colony, then another colony will just come and, and find that. So Angie, thanks so much for taking time out to speak with us. Your information has been really helpful. We hope that the schools will um, take a moment out to, to show all the, the officials at the school um, this important information. Thanks, thanks a lot. Elizabeth. I enjoyed it. Oh, my Some schools have bat houses on school grounds to provide an alternate man-made structure for roosting. However, public health and wildlife officials agree that bat houses are not recommended for most schools. If a bat house is present on school grounds, it should only be in an area where the ground below the bat house is not accessible by children. The key points to remember are, consider showing the short video for kids to the children in your school. Call your local animal control or wildlife official if a bat is found on the ground. Check your school grounds for signs of bat colonies and if you find bat colonies roosting on school grounds, call your state wildlife agency for assistance. Thank you so much for taking time to view this video and addressing this issue in your school.